Hi, everybody. Welcome to a very special football game on VipeFortBend.com. It's Monday night football, but it's a continuation of Saturday afternoon football. I'm Roger Smith, and we have a very important football game to finish as the George Ranch Longhorns are taking on the George Bush Broncos. This game started at 1 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. With 4.22 left in the second quarter, Bush has a 7-0 lead on an Adrian Cormier touchdown run, but the George Ranch Longhorns have a third down and goal at the four, and that's when we're going to resume this football game. Oh, I guess I ought to introduce myself. I'm Roger Smith, James Kovaleski, our color commentator expert and extraordinaire, will be here very, very shortly. He's fighting the traffic with this 6 p.m. resumption of the football game, and now we're going to have the star-spangled banner. We'll step aside and be back with the conclusion of the game, the end of the second quarter, and the second half on VibeFortBend.com. When everything works together, it's a beautiful thing. With Xfinity, you get Wi-Fi faster than a gig to power a house full of devices, so your home becomes a symphony of activity. <clears throat> we start with Dad streaming cooking videos in the kitchen. Add a little gaming in the basement. Gorgeous. Now let's bring in some working from the couch. And finally, the sweet melody of Grandpa streaming his nature shows. Can your internet do that? And there goes Grandpa. Power a house full of connected devices. Learn more about Wi-Fi speed faster than a gig and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Ends 12 31 21. Restrictions apply. New connect 50 megabits per second internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi Fi requires gig internet and XI gateway. Actual speeds vary. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Okay, welcome back. Here we are before a small crowd of very interested people, including some Ridgepoint Panthers who are here to scout the Bush Broncos. They will play them probably on Saturday. In fact, there are more and more Ridgepoint Panthers arriving every single minute as it's going to be third and goal at the four for George Ranch, the visiting team here at Hall Stadium, wearing their white pants and jerseys and the black helmets, Bush in their navy blue pants, the bright orange jerseys with the big old white numerals that are very easy to read. We love that. And they are wearing the white helmets with the navy blue stripe down the middle and the GB logo on either side. The public address announcer is kind of letting everybody know here exactly what the situation is. And I'm not in a position to listen to everything he says because I do need to talk to you. One thing that I am curious about is how long will halftime be? We've got four minutes and 22 seconds left to play in this second quarter. Bush clinging to a 7 to nothing lead as soon as... The national anthem had been finished. And by the way, I guess this game has had two star-spangled banner versions. But as soon as that song was over, the Bush fans were chanting D up like you often hear in a basketball game. George Ranch comes out to the football, and we start with a dramatic play, an important down-and-distance situation. And we'll see how George Ranch handles it. Hyman Drinkard is their main running back. And a timeout is taken by Bush before we even have the first play. We'll step aside and be back. Still, 7 to nothing, Bush. First Iron Automotive is passing out the treats for your vehicles the entire month of October. $25 off select AC Delco batteries, $50 off brake pad replacement, and $75 off four tires. Head to the website firsttireauto.com and claim your savings. You don't even have to wear a costume to get these Halloween treats all month long. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointments today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireauto.com. Okay, you know, that's not that, that unusual, I guess, because... 
before you run the first play, you're going to have someone call a timeout. It's like a basketball game. And by the way, these two schools, Bush and George Ranch, played each other in a tiebreaker game to determine the last playoff qualifier during the basketball season. And Bush won that one right over there at, uh, I guess it was at uh, the other field house, Wheeler. And Hyman Drinkard running off the right side. He is stoned. He's knocked back. He's giving ground, and he's dropped at the seven-yard line, a loss of three. The Bush defense truly coming through on that one, stringing it out. Henry Tatum, the cornerback, the last one to escort Drinkard out of bounds. And will they try a field goal here? No, it doesn't look like it. It looks like they intend to go for it. Dion Drinkard is their quarterback. And to his right is Andrew Syke. Snap to Drinkard, pumps once, he's hit and sacked! And Bush comes up with a big play on the first two plays of the game, or the first two plays of the resumption of the game. Ajay Abayomi comes through on the blitzing sack. And it's gonna be the Broncos taking over. Where will they spot the football? At the 15 yard line. Big, big play by the Bush Broncos. They have set the tone here. And the clock is running. It shouldn't be because it was a change of possession. The clock keeps running, under four minutes to go in this second quarter. Seven to nothing Bush, and we'll see how aggressive Bush is on offense. And now they're realizing that the clock was running. The officials are saying, let's stop it. We're going to have to put it back. Well, I'm thinking we have more than four minutes to go before we finish this second quarter. 404. I'm not sure who the referee is, but he has let the clock operator know that it needs to be at 404. So how about those Bush Broncos on play number one? They absolutely blew up two efforts by the George Ranch Longhorns, and now Tyler Hilder is at quarterback, and he's got Adrian Cormier right behind him. Hand off straight up the middle. Playing it close to the vest and about a two-yard run by Cormier on the first play from scrimmage on the resumption of this game that started Saturday. If you just joined us, well, there are a couple other things that I need to tell you whether you just joined us or not. One of them is that Bush is 4-0 in their District 26A games coming into this one. Ridgepoint is now 5-0 because they had a weather-shortened game, which they won, quote-unquote, over Elkins on Saturday. Hilder hands it off. There goes Cormier. Plenty of room to run. Stiff arm keeps going across the 25 to the 27. And he has a first down. That is a first down. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. If you're with the Bush Broncos, well, I guess the best location of First Tire and Auto to go to would be the one in Katy Cinco Ranch. Now, one thing I was not able to find out, and that is who is going to get the ball to start in the third quarter. That's pretty important. If Bush could somehow put together a touchdown at the end of this drive and go to the locker room with a 14-0 lead and then start the second half with the football, that would be great. There's a quick hitch pass by Tyler Hilder, and it's complete, but it goes for nothing. It's number five, and frankly, I don't know who that is. I'm going to turn this up and see if the PA guy knows. Okay, well, I couldn't, I didn't hear any description of that particular play. Second down and 10, it was a completion, but for no gain. Two receivers to the right of Tyler Hilder on second and 10. Hands it off to Cormier. Stood up right at the line of scrimmage. Great tackle, a textbook tackle. Jeffrey Ugo Chukwu, and it's going to be third and make it nine. They did give one yard to Cormier on that carry. And because Bush had three timeouts, I guess they're just going to go ahead and use them up because now we're at 2.01 to go in the first half. They still have that 7-0 lead, and they would like very much 
to keep the football at the very least and maybe even continue driving it down the field and get a touchdown. So you got the George Ranch Longhorns with two district losses. If they lose this one today, they're pretty much out of the picture for those four playoff spots in District 26A. Clements watching this with interest or listening to this, I guess I should say. They have two district losses, and they're going to play Bush in the final week of the season. Third down and nine, and we'll see how this George Ranch defense will come after Tyler Hilder. Will they hang back and try to clog up the passing lanes, or will they try to get a sack? Hiller calls for the snap, fakes the handoff, now goes straight up the middle and cannot get out of the backfield. He's just engulfed. Matthew Lambert makes the sack, and the Broncos will have to punt it away. And now George Ranch takes a timeout, and we'll take it with him. This is VipeFortBend.com, 7-0. The Bush Broncos, 147 to go in the first half. You are the master of the multitask the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. All right, time to punt. Aguna to punt it for the Bush Broncos. Good snap right on target. He gets it away. It's a low tail dragger, and it's going to be returned a little bit. About a six, seven-yard return. That's it for Joseph Wilson, and the Broncos were great on the coverage. The first guy to hit him was Henry Tatum, who's a real playmaker. And finishing it off was a Bush Bronco whose helmet flew off. That Joe Kim Nicolau. By the way, the biggest playmaker among several on the Bush defense is Brandon Chambers. He's a senior. He's awesome. He can run sideline to sideline, and when he finds the ball carrier, he blows him up usually. Dion Drinkard takes the spread formation snap, gets rid of it quickly near sideline, and a catch for a short gain. Two, perhaps three yards as he delivered it to Gregor Jones. Gregor, the overlander, give him two yards on that catch. It's second down and eight. And we're at 119 to go in this second quarter. George Ranch has one more timeout, and they trail seven to nothing. Deion Drinkard hands it off on the delay play to his brother, Hyman. He goes over the right side, turns it up, and picks up three. That's it. Gets to the 45-yard line to set up a third down and five. D'Antonio Hackworth came up from the secondary to finish off that play, and we're under a minute to go. Deion Drinkard, sophomore quarterback, drops straight back. Here comes the rush. He sets up a screen, gets it to Hyman, breaks a tackle, and gets the first down to the Bush 36. Bush reacted well, but it was well executed. Bryce McDonald made the tackle, and Dion dropping back. The sophomore throwing off his back foot. And his brother was able to leap up and make the catch. Now Dion pumps toward the right sideline. Throws off his back foot way down the field. The ball falls incomplete. D'Antonio Hackworth went down. Joseph Wilson was the intended receiver. And with 25.2 to go in the first half. And we do have a flag down near the line of scrimmage. It's going to be on George Ranch. The Longhorns still have that timeout in their pocket. We'll see if they use it. They won't use it here because of the incomplete pass, but we'll wonder, do they use it after this particular play? Or do they try and get a gain? And if they do, run up there and spike it. They trail 7 to nothing, and they are battling for their playoff life. Dion Drinkard hands it off to Hyman. They go a little close to the vest. He's not going to get very far. That play didn't develop quickly. It's about a gain of two to the Bush 45. And a timeout is taken by George Ranch. This will be third down, and they will need 18 yards to get the first down. Using that final timeout means they can wing it down the field. We'll step aside and be back. This is VipeFortBend.com. 
Hi, this is Mariela. And Melina coming to you from Nick's Italian Restaurant, where you can come and try one of our house specialties, the Nick's Shrimp, or one of our chicken pistachios. Not in the mood for food? You can also try one of our savory desserts, like our homemade tiramisu or cannoli. We're located on FM 1464, just north of Austin High School. Can't sign in? You can call ahead at 346-401-1546 seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Or you can hit us on one of the major delivery platforms, Uber, Grubhub, or DoorDash. We look forward to seeing you here at Nick's Italian Restaurant, where our family gets bigger every time you stop by. Here we go, third down, Dion Drinkard pressured, hit as he throws, the ball comes out, it's fumbled, and Bush recovers at the 45-yard line, their own 45-yard line. Big, big hit. A folly on Oluwashinbomi. No, wrong. Somebody wearing 90 for Bush hit the quarterback and knocked the ball out, and Bryce McDonald recovered, and with 8.8 .8 seconds to go, if you're Bush, you might as well just throw the ball down the field. Even if it gets picked off, no harm could be done. So the Bush defense is dominating things in this final four minutes and 22 seconds of the second quarter in a game that George Ranch has to win. And Bush wouldn't be finished if they don't, but they sure would be in great shape if they do. Hilder drops back, throws it down the far sideline, wobbling pass, battled, and it's intercepted by George Ranch. At the 24-yard line, Garrison Backers comes up with it, and the Ranch Rowdies over there are very excited. However, if the scoreboard clock is accurate, that is to say if the referee doesn't say put a little more time on the clock, that will be that for the first half. All right, so I think I just heard the referee say it's halftime, three minutes. And that sounds okay to me. Yes, they have set the clock at three minutes. We'll step aside and be back with the second half. Roger Smith with you. James Kovaleski driving like a bat out of hell on his way to Hall Stadium. We'll be right back. Hello, fans. This is Bradley Stavenaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth-generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and 9 auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. When everything works together, it's a beautiful thing. With Xfinity, you get Wi-Fi faster than a gig to power a house full of devices. So your home becomes a symphony of activity. <clears throat> we start with Dad streaming cooking videos in the kitchen. Add a little gaming in the basement. Gorgeous. Now let's bring in some working from the couch. And finally, the sweet melody of Grandpa streaming his nature shows. Can your internet do that? And there goes Grandpa. Power a house full of connected devices. Learn more about Wi-Fi speed faster than a gig and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Ends 12 31 21 Restrictions apply. New connect 50 megabits per second internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and XFi gateway. Actual speeds vary. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. All right, welcome back. We've got less than a minute before we resume this football game starting the third quarter, and James Kovaleski has joined us. Do you want to tell us about your driving experience? Well, yeah, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to pick up this game today, uh, but got the green light that, that you know, uh, 
Bob McKay, our fearless leader, was going to make this two-man crew for tonight. So I, I got a little bit of a late start from my home. I, I live in kind of in town in Houston, and uh, it's just a rough time of day to get across town. So I apologize for being late, but I was telling you know telling you Roger that I, I really want to see these teams. I haven't had the privilege of being able to kind of see a lot of the Fort Bend games, so I want to get my eyes on these two teams heading into these pivotal games next week with Bush and Ridgepoint and then Clemens and George Ranch. And you were a defensive coach. You would have loved what you saw from the Bush Broncos. Tackles for loss on the first two plays. When we resumed this game, it was third and goal at the four. Instantly, two losses. George Ranch went for it on fourth down. Then Bush punted it away, and they forced a fumble on a blitzing sack. So hmm. the Bush defense has set the tone. They lead 7-0, and now Bush gets the ball to start the third quarter. By the way, if you're uh, wondering about the weather here in Missouri City, it's now down to 88 degrees. The field completely covered in shade. No wind to bother us, and now here we go with the kick. It is coming down to D'Antonio Hackworth at the 10-yard line. Makes a few moves at the 15, gets across the 20, and he stood up near the 25, and that's where he goes down. That's where the Bush Broncos will start scrimmaging in the third quarter. Andrew Syke made the tackle for George Ranch. So if anybody out there watches hockey very often, sometimes in the, the style that some hockey teams play is once they get a lead of even one goal, they just try to play the dump and chase thing and just play clamp down defense. That's kind of what, like, what Bush likes to do. Adrian Cormier, the pint-sized running back behind Tyler Hilder, and he runs it off the left side. Slams ahead for about a four-yard pickup, and there for George Ranch is Trevion Aikens. Yeah, good movement there from the center and the left guard on the double team, so that's, that's something to keep your eye on. If you're going to get that kind of movement on a double team at the point of attack, that could, that could lead to a big play. Because what happened there was that double team, they stayed on the lineman. They couldn't get to the linebacker. So the linebacker is able to make the play. If they can get to that linebacker, it could pop. Second down, and we'll call it a long six. Broncos continue to run out of the pistol with a one wide receiver to either side. And Hilder, I think, was trying to draw George Ranch off, but his team might have false started. Yeah, that's what happened. And, James, I've been setting this up for George Ranch, which already has two losses in district play. They've got to win this. They're pretty much out of it if they don't win. Bush really wants to win and stay undefeated at 5-0 and as they will face George Ranch. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. They're going to face Ridgepoint later this week. Right. Probably Saturday. And what if they're both 5-0? and That would be a big attraction. After the penalty, it's second down and 13, and straight ahead go the Broncos, and Cormier can't find any running room. He's bottled up completely. Lee Jones in there for George Ranch. The Longhorns want to get the football back, and they have an opportunity. It'll be third and ten. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You mentioned the large contingent of Ridgepoint Panther uh, varsity football players are here. And with, with it being a Saturday game, you know, your practice schedule kind of pushes back a day. You know, so they, they probably had today off. They probably, you know, watched the film from their, from their the little bit of film they had <laughs> in yeah. that game against Elkins on Saturday. And uh, so, yeah, it's great to see that they, they care. <laughs> you know, there's they're, Coach LeFavors near the 50-yard yep. line seat. Yep. Hilder going to drop back. They protect him. He steps up, throws over the middle, incomplete. Overshot his man, trying to deliver to Michael Omodia. Outstanding coverage by George Ranch. That was yeah. Garrison Backers who got the interception, a harmless one, at the end of the first half. And now Bush will punt. Yeah, that was a big penalty. I feel good. I feel good for Bush's prospects. Though, just what I've seen early, because I feel like their O line is, is under. They got this under control. That was a nice, clean pocket. I told you about the good double team on the first down run play. So I'm seeing some good things out of the Bush O line. So I, I think they'll be able to do some things offensively in the second half. Low snap, but Jedediah Aduna has it. Puts it up in the air, and Joseph Wilson chasing it back to his own 37. He's on the left hash mark, trying to make moves, and he gets drilled. In the open field, here came Henry Tatum and just took his head off. You know, sometimes you just got to pick a direction and run forward. He made the mistake of dancing. Totally. I mean, really any time, but especially against a, a team of good team speed, like the Bush Broncos, you can't, can't be dancing like that. You've got to just <laughs> stick your foot in the ground and get what you can get. And, you know, we were talking about um, what a great player Ridgepoint has 
in uh, Davis at their safety position, and that's where they have Henry Tatum hmm. in the Bush lineup. He plays way, way back. Oh. There, there's somebody who jumped. Damian Drinkard throws it near sideline, and the pass is broken up. He was trying to get it to Caleb Kaiser. And for Bush, was that Jedediah Aduna who broke it up? I believe it was, but we'll check the flag. Offsides on the Broncos. So we don't have any bands. We don't. We do have some cheerleaders, or at least we got cheerleaders megaphones down there for Bush, and we got George Ranch cheerleaders, and the Ranch Rowdies over there. High snap. Damian gives it to Hyman Drinkard, and he carries for about four and a half, and he needed five. We're going to have a short yardage situation. Clamping down to make the tackle just in time was Cozy Okorafor. And George Ranch will go quickly. One yard to go, second down and one, not, not third and one. Hyman Drinkard over the left side, stiff arms a man and delivers a blow as he goes out of bounds at the 48-yard line. And Jedediah Aduna credit him with the tackle, but he got knocked back. Yeah, Bush is playing that man-to-man -man coverage we talked about in our last broadcast, and I've seen them play uh, so often. And so the danger of that is if you can get to the edge, now your DBs are looking at receivers. They're not seeing the run play happening. So actually your, your defensive backs are late in responding to the runs. That's kind of what happened there once you got to the edge. You had a little bit of space to run. Pistol formation. Damien hands off to Hyman over the right side, making nice moves. He's got sweet feet. He's got at least eight yards, and he's still going and driven out of bounds in front of his team's bench. It was Paul Omodia. In fact, by the way, we have the Nick's Italian Restaurant family connection of Paul Omodia and his brother Michael. Paul is a DB, and Michael is a wide receiver. And remember, at Nick's Italian Restaurant on FM 1464, just a few hundred feet north of Austin High School, their family gets bigger every time you stop by. Second down and four, pistol formation. Fake to Hyman Drinker. Damian throws it out in the flat. Wide open man. Catch first down. Far sideline and goes out near the 35. Let's see where, they, see where they spot him. 38 yard line as they delivered it to Trevion Aikens. That's a first down. Think of First Tyron Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttyronauto.com. Now that looks sharp. I mean, that was a great fake, wasn't it? I mean, just great job by Drinker carrying out his fake. I mean, Got a penalty here. Is it going to be a timeout taken by Bush? Um, I guess it's a timeout. I don't yep. really a signal for that, but I yeah, don't see a penalty. Yeah, they signal timeout to Bush. Okay. Yep. All right, we'll take a quick break and be back. This is VibeFortBend.com. First Iron Automotive is passing out the treats for your vehicles the entire month of October. $25 off select AC Delco batteries, $50 off brake pad replacement, and $75 off four tires. Head to the website firsttireauto.com and claim your savings. You don't even have to wear a costume to get these Halloween treats all month long. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointments today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireauto.com. Welcome back to a must-win game for the George Ranch Longhorns. They trail the Bush Broncos in the third quarter. 8.21 to go in the third. It is 7-0 Broncos on top. This game started Saturday, and they had to stop playing because of lightning, and they couldn't resume it until now. So here we go with Damian Drinkard, the sophomore quarterback. His brother Hyman to the left of him, and they give it to Hyman on a draw play, and he gets out of the backfield, rumbling over the right side, and a great effort to get down inside the 20-yard line. And it was Paul Omodia hanging on for dear, li dear life, and it's going to be very close to what he needs for a first down. Second down and only two. They spotted him a little bit short of where I thought they would. So the Bush defense dominant in what was left of the second quarter. And now they fake a blitz, and wait a minute, I think there's movement, maybe some encroachment. No, it's a false start. Good job by Bush. Coming off the right side, you had Isaac Bouye, who was going to come on a blitz. And I think, I thought he had jumped off sides, but somebody on the George Ranch offensive line saw him and flinched a little bit. So it's second down and seven. You know, 
I had told you about a play I saw in the fourth quarter of that game between Ridgepoint and George Ranch. Snap to Damian Drinkard, quarterback draw. There he goes, slips through a couple of tackles, but then Bush hangs on and gets him down near the 22. He's three yards short of the first down. It'll be a big third down coming up. So you had Davis for Ridgepoint who got the 109-yard pick six late in the game when Ridgepoint was at George Ranch. I believe it was Cole Murphy, the senior quarterback, who threw that interception. And that might have been one of those cases where head coach Nick Cavallo just said, I'm going to go with the young kid and see what happens when I put him in there. And that's why Damian Drinkard is at quarterback for these George Ranch Longhorns. Third down and three. I think it's four down territory. And an option to the right. Hyman Drinkard will get to the edge, and he'll get the first down. Wrestled out inside the 15. I can tell you this. Coach Cavallo and his staff, they're, they're really sharp. They're calling a really good game. Like I'm telling you, deciding to run the triple option out the back door to the outside, that's where it's at. You know, uh, all those DBs are getting run off in man-to-man -man coverage, so there was nobody on the pitch, man. Just really impressed with the play calling that I've seen here for George Ranch in their first drive that, that I've been present. And, yes, also on the, the passes that we see in this third quarter, they're letting Dion get the ball out of his hand quickly. He hands it off, running right inside the 10-yard line. That's a pickup of five and maybe six. And that's the first time that I think we've seen this guy carry the football. Was that number four? No, it was number three. No, I'm sorry. It was 20. Close. Yeah. <laughs> Jaden Shelton. Jaden Shelton carrying to the right side. And he picked up seven. You so see where they're attacking, though? Yeah. They're getting to the edge pretty easily. So I think if you're Bush, you're telling your defensive ends, hey, guys, you have to do a better job of holding that edge. Yeah. And they might be setting them up. Those guys might start splitting out wider, and then you run it up the middle and break something. And there is a drill in the backfield, and that is my man, Brandon Chambers. I've been seeing this guy blow people up. This will be the third varsity season for Brandon. He is a playmaker, and when he hits you, you feel it. And he dropped yeah. Jaden Shelton for a loss of two. I, I would say both the George Ranch and Bush O-lines are, are well above average O-lines. I've been impressed with them because, like, Bush is sending a lot of heat inside. And for the most part, there's been no leakage except then. <laughs> that time, yeah, there, yeah. there was a, uh, a big run through, and that cost George Ranch there. Shelton in the backfield next to Dion Drinkard. And it's Dion Drinkard on the keeper, moving to the right, sliding forward. He does not have the first down. It'll be fourth and about two, maybe three, near the six-yard line. So I see them going for it here. They got close on that possession near the end of the third, uh, second quarter, and they could have kicked a short field goal, and they went for it, but they're going to call a timeout and dial up the best play they can think of. We'll step aside and be back on VikeFortBend.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max and OfficeDepot.com. And we're back. It's gonna be fourth and a long two for the George Ranch Longhorns at the Bush Broncos six. Longhorns trying to move from right to left. Did I say at the Longhorns six? I meant at the Broncos six. So the Longhorns are just six yards away from pay dirt. And they have no interest in kicking the field goal. Deion Drinkard with Hyman Drinkard to his left. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, drops back, looking end zone, pressure coming and down he goes! At the 16 yard line, Bush came pouring in. And the sack goes to Cozy Okorafor. And the Bush Broncos have turned away the George Ranch Longhorns the last two times that they've been inside the 10. And, yeah. you know, 
kicking a field goal a couple of times doesn't look like that bad of a deal right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with you, and I wonder if you've seen maybe more George Ranch than I have. I don't know what their kicking situation is, but uh, just I agree. You know, it would have been nice to come away with points on that one. So here are the Broncos. They like to run between the tackles. Hilder with an extra man in the backfield to block for Cormier, and there goes Cormier. Has to blast his way through a couple of tacklers, and he only gets a couple of yards. That's it. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I feel like both O-lines are playing well. You know, like I'm not seeing a whole lot of leakage. I'm seeing some movement. But the thing is just the pursuit of the overall defenses are so good. Even plays that are blocked pretty well can lead to like one, two, yard, two three-yard gains. Yeah. Judson Mixon made that last tackle, and now Bush. It's, it's one of those one-score games that almost feels like it's more than a one-score game, just seven to nothing. That was the score when they had to call it quits on Saturday afternoon and come back here on Monday night to play this one off. Hilder taking his time, takes the snap and a whistle before the snap. Delay of game on Bush. You don't want to make that kind of mistake yeah. here. That's the thing. Both teams have had a couple, you know, false start delay game. These, these five-yard penalties, like you just mentioned, how you said it, it's a one-score game, but it feels like two. Same thing. A five-yard penalty feels like a ten-yard penalty just because uh, yards are so hard to come by. So it's, I just feel like this is a, right now the level that this game is being played at. Aside from the penalty, it's being played at a very high level as far as execution uh, on offense and defense. And for what it's worth, the fans can hear the wind is starting to pick up, and it's blowing in the face of the Bush Broncos, but it'll only be blowing in their face for the last four minutes of the third quarter. Hilder drops back on second and 14, and it's in and out of the hands. Oh, that ball should have been caught. And it's number five, the guy whose name we don't have on our roster. Aaron Valentine. Aaron Valentine, okay. I've got him as number one on my old roster. You can see how wrinkle it is. And I just didn't have time to get a better one. I pulled it out of the back of my car. Yeah, v Valentine might have scored on that. But yeah. Th uh, he came free. Uh, there's a miscommunication in the secondary. And uh, th th <laughs> Hilder put a b good ball on him. And it, it, it was, it was dropped maybe slightly behind, mm -hmm. but, but it should have been caught. Yeah. Same down and distance, or Ooh. third and 15, same distance. And Hilder throws it, it's picked off. This will be a pick six for George Ranch. And an easy one, ridiculously easy for Trevion Akins. He walked in from about 12 yards out. And obviously, Tyler Hilder did not see the DB kind of sneaking in back there. There's and a penalty, though. Right? It's a penalty well, against the Broncos for some kind of okay. illegal shift, and that is of no consequence. George Ranch declines the penalty and with 3.45 to go in the third quarter, suddenly they get a touchdown and the extra point would tie it. I think George Ranch got lucky. I, I think I saw a blindside block. Oh. You know, but it was not called, but, you know, now, like, that, that could negate, obviously, it would negate the, the, the touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> Which is huge because, obviously, it's so hard to score. Uh... But hey, great play by Aikens. They were trying to run a wheel route, Roger. They're trying to sneak the running back up the sideline. Aikens saw it all the way and stepped in front. Yeah, I'll bet that might be the first time this year someone sniffed it out that well. And David Michel comes on and kicks the extra point. He's no relation, I don't think, to Sony Michel. But we do have a tie game, 7-7, seven 3.45 seven, to go in the third quarter. Bush playing for better playoff position. George Ranch playing for its playoff life. When everything works together, it's a beautiful thing. With Xfinity, you get Wi-Fi faster than a gig to power a house full of devices. So your home becomes a symphony of activity. <clears throat> we start with Dad streaming cooking videos in the kitchen. Add a little gaming in the basement. Gorgeous. Now let's bring in some working from the couch. And finally, the sweet melody of Grandpa streaming his nature shows. Can your internet do that? And there goes Grandpa. 
Power a house full of connected devices. Learn more about Wi-Fi speed faster than a gig and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Ends 12-31-21. Restrictions apply. New connect 50 megabits per second internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and X5 gateway. Actual speeds vary. Okay, George Ranch has new life. The offense has been frustrated at every turn, but the defense came through them on the pick six by Trevion Akins. And now Michelle puts the kickoff in the air, air and Antonio Hackworth takes it at the four. Up he comes on the left side. Now to the middle of the field and he's dropped in the open field. You'll never see a better uh, tackle by Andrew Syke. As D'Antonio Hackworth is very, very difficult to contain, and there's a flag down on the play. Yes, yeah, so that'll probably back him up half the distance to the goal. I'm assuming that's on the return team. So we're thinking, Kovo and I, Kovo and I plus the whole Vibe Fort Bend team, we're thinking that we're going to have the game between George Ranch and Bush on Saturday. And, you know, when Bush had to finish this suspended game on a Monday. They can't play on a Thursday. The UIL uh, prohibits that and Bush wouldn't want to anyway. Now from their own five yard line with 3.38 to go in the third quarter. Tyler Hilder and the Bush Broncos gotta play it carefully. There goes Cormier up the middle. That's a good play on first down. Seven yards slamming ahead. They opened up a nice hole for him. It still definitely is an advantage for Ridge Point right now. You know, Ridge Point got to play like basically a quarter and a half of a game on Saturday. You know, George uh, Bush is going to have to essentially play a full game total on a Monday night. So, you know, the Ridge Point guys are having more time to recover, prepare, but it, it is what it is. Couldn't be helped, but that's, it's definitely an advantage for Ridge Point. And you know, overtime, as far as Ridge Point is concerned, overtime would be great. <laughs> and up the middle goes Cormier blasting ahead, and I think he got just enough for the first down. Tackle yeah. made by Judson Mixon, and on the previous play, I didn't give him credit, Garrison Backers made another tackle, but that is a first down. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. Yeah, I don't know about you, Roger, but I, I think Bush has this, the size advantage. I feel like they, they have a little more size up front, a little more beef, and yeah. you know, obviously they have great team speeds. So I think that if they can assert their physicality here, they, they can get it moving on offense. Cormier with a handoff off the left side. Seeing the daylight, goes ahead for five yards and there aren't that many backs that have that kind of vision who can just see a tiny crevice of daylight and go for it and end up with five yards. And by the way, a little shout out to Nelvins Borgella who was basically the feature running back for Bush. I see him on crutches before this game and uh, so he's out for the year and whatever Bush is going to accomplish, they'll have to do it without Nelvins Borgella, their senior running back. Wish he could play. Here comes Cormier around the right side. He kind of dipped in and then he went wider. That's a pretty good run of three yards, but it was strung out nicely by George Ranch. Ayomidi Ogunsanya made that tackle and it sets up a third down and two. Minute and a half to go in the third quarter and we're tied at seven. George Ranch has to win. With three losses, I don't know that they'd be mathematically eliminated, but I just, well, it would be hard to see them get they, into the playoffs. Wouldn't that they way. get the fourth spot if they could beat Clements, though? Possibly. And up the middle, there goes Cormier. He's going to be sore in the morning. I don't think he got to what he needed for the first down, Kovo. He needed to reach the 25. I just don't think he got there. And wow. One really? of his linemen is helping him up. Looks like they're sending the punting unit out there. Watch, it, watch for a fake here. Yeah, I was, I was about to say, they wouldn't fake it, would they? They have a it, full yard. It's very deep in their territory. And so I would, I would say no, but if I was on the return, I'd, I'd still be alert because it is a short, it's a fairly short distance to pick up. If they're going to snap it short, Caleb Johnson would be the man, but he doesn't look like he's in the path of the snap. Aduna ready. Good snap, 
Beautiful snap, actually. Low spiral kick, bounces two times, three times, still going. Oh. <laughs> and touched inadvertently by the Broncos near the 37-yard line. Oopsie on the part of Joakim Nukalau. And with 32 seconds to go in quarter number three, George Ranch gets the football with a chance to take the lead. This kind of reminds me of Super Bowl V. The Cowboys had a great defense. Their offense just didn't get them enough points that day. They had several bad breaks go against them. And they lost to a Baltimore Colts team that I just didn't think was the better team. It was a real blunder bowl. Nine turnovers combined by the two teams. And that's your history lesson for the day. <laughs> I love it. So George Ranch, 32 seconds to go in the third. We'll have the wind at their back for a couple more plays. There goes Drinkard rolling toward the right. He was hotly pursued and he threw an incomplete pass and there's a flag late where the ball landed and I think they're gonna call D'Antonio Hackworth for a hit the officials didn't think he needed to make. Mm. Yeah, I, oh. Roger, you know, I like I said, I I feel like George Ranch is a very talented team, but I feel like Bush has the physicality edge, you know, I, I think they just have to, if they can limit some of these little mistakes after, you know, I think they can they can take this ball game. By the way, you know, we were uh, doing that game between Dulles and Travis on Saturday night, and you were talking about, you know, you kind of see things from a defensive player's perspective in the times that a defensive player will get flagged for things that an offensive player doesn't get flagged for. There is one thing that defensive players do sometimes and I really don't like and I have a feeling you might actually go along with me by the way it's pass interference, pass interference on D'Antonio Hackworth of Bush and an automatic first down for George Ranch anyway when a defensive player makes a tackle and then stands over the offensive player so he can't get up I think that should be flagged I can't stand that I think what they ought to do is thrust their helmet up as hard as they can on the player who is straddling them <laughs> That will put a stop to it. <laughs> but re really, I mean, you'll see yeah. guys go out of their way to straddle a guy who's trying to stand up. Yeah, especially. That should be flagged. Especially in a hurry-up situation. Yeah. You see that a lot where they're trying to hold them down to, to have more clock expire. Now, that, that is definitely, that's even adding another element where you're actually trying to subvert the game a little bit by not allowing them to snap the ball in time to get another playoff. So I, I, I can agree with you on that. So George Ranch. Thanks to the pass interference penalty against Bush, now has a first down at their own 49. 27 and 6 tenths seconds to go in the third quarter clock, and we are all locked up at 7. George Ranch has to win. If they lose tonight, it would be their third district loss. Drinkard hands it off to Drinkard. Drinkard goes left, avoids Brandon Chambers, gets three yards, and then gets pushed back. So, Roger, that play was a counter play. They pulled the right guard and the right tackle, and that is actually my, if I was George Ranch, that's one of my preferred methods to attack a defense like this. Uh, whenever you have an aggressive defense, the counters are really nice because you can just try to pin them all down and then pull linemen around. A lot of times you can get big run increases. So I, I, what I'm seeing from George Ranch in terms of their play calling, I, I think it's, it's very sound. So I have a feeling that based on what you're describing, they might kind of have a pedestrian running game going, and then they will pop one when something busts open for them. Correct. Well, here we go. We're going to the fourth quarter. We'll take a break and return. This is VibeFortBend.com, 7-7, to -7, Bush and George Ranch. Hi, this is Mariela and Melina coming to you from Nick's Italian Restaurant where you can come and try one of our house specialties, the Nick's Shrimp, or one of our chicken pistachios. Not in the mood for food? You can also try one of our savory desserts like our homemade tiramisu or cannoli. We're located on FM 1464 just north of Austin High School. Can't sign in? You can call ahead at 346-401-1546 seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Or you can hit us on one of the major delivery platforms, Uber, Grubhub, or DoorDash. 
We look forward to seeing you here at Nick's Italian Restaurant, where our family gets bigger every time you stop by. Twelve minutes to go. George Ranch with the football and now moving from left to right, trying to get into the south end zone at Hall Stadium. And the wind isn't too oppressive, but what wind we do have is in the face of the George Ranch offense. Deion Drinkard bootlegging to the right, looking down the field, throws, and it's behind his receiver and it falls incomplete, trying to get it to Joseph Wilson. And it'll be third down and seven for George Ranch. Yeah, that, you know, one thing I was, gonna, I was thinking about, that pass interference call earlier, I think if you're a Bush Bronco fan, you, you can't get too upset about that because that's just kind of the style you play is a very aggressive style of man-to-man -man coverage. So you kind of just sacrifice, like, for all the great plays that you make and kind of the, the stifling nature of your defense, every now and then you are going to get a P.I. call. And I think, I think they're okay with living with that. Yeah, some defenses don't mind if every once in a while you get a personal foul. And now we have a timeout. Uh, or do, do we have a timeout? Well, Bush's defensive unit, most of it is coming over to the sideline and George Ranch is still lined up ready to make a play. And now the Bush defenders go back out there. The seven who came over are joining the four who were lined up. Fast moving game, we're hurting in yeah. the fourth quarter. I thought it was going to resume in the first quarter, and then when I got here and I started talking to coaches, I found out there was 4.22 to go in the second. I see. And here we go, third down and seven. Dion Drinkard looked like he was ready for the snap, steps up, gives more instructions, play clock down to seven. On third and seven, drops back, pocket collapses, he runs, and he is hit by Brandon Chambers and driven back. and. Nothing doing there, correction, not 44. It was for Bryce McDonald, and the Bush fans are loving it after that play by McDonald. Yep, great play there, and I'm sure George Ranch, I mean, of course you want to keep the drive going, but you're probably content to punt it here. Uh, you know, you're know, you going to be punting from inside the 50, so there's a good chance to get, to get a pin situation here and see if you can get Bush starting a really poor field position. All right, well, let's see here. I'm not sure who George Ranch's punter is. They don't punt that often. Low snap, bounces back there. It's actually Hyman Drinkard, I believe, and he punts it away. Hackworth's going to let it bounce. No chance to return that one, and it's going to trickle down inside the 10, inside the 6-yard line, and the Bush Broncos have... They've been operating with pretty poor field position. Seems like every time they get it, they're inside their 20 and they'll start from such a position again. You know, you talk about um, sometimes some teams are okay with personal fouls. My, my good friend Derek Ruthard, he's the offensive coordinator at uh, Clements. His dad would always tell stories, and I don't know if they were just tall tales of 70s football, if they're actually true, but he said that on every single game, the coach would tell them on the first play of the game, the nose guard, just run into the center so they knock the quarterback over. <laughs> Take the personal foul, but then he's like, every game that quarterback would get scared and would fumble the snap. <laughs> yeah, good idea sometimes. Right. Hilder swinging it out there to Cormier. Gets outside the numbers, good yardage, goes out of bounds near the stick. And I think he's got nine yards on that first play. That yeah. was one of those kind of the George Ranch school, get it out of the quarterback's hand quickly. And I agree. I, I think against for both teams with really strong defenses on, defenses on the interior, it's best just get it to the perimeter. And uh, so that was basically just like an extended run play by throwing the ball. And I think that's the best way to go for both teams. Like we said, a lot of, there's a lot of great defensive plays where it's a one or two yard game, but both teams have the ability to suddenly explode for a 9, 10, 15, 20 yard game. Second down and less than one for Bush. They're on the right hash mark, moving right to left in this fourth quarter. We're tied, seven all. And a swing pass, and that might be a free ball. No, they blew it dead, but you know, Kovo, it it's looked close, like yeah, it, close, it either went parallel to the yard lines or even backward, but the official said incomplete, so it'll be third and less than a yard. I think incomplete was the right call, but it definitely was close to where I would want my player, if, I, if I'm Coach Aldridge, I'm telling him, hey, just make sure you play into the whistle, because the whistle came out a little late there. And I think you, if you're the officials, you don't want to say that it's a live ball unless you're absolutely sure that it wasn't a forward pass. Right, because here there's no replay, 
right? Sometimes the NFL, you'll let it play out as a fumble. Right. And then you can verify and replay. But here, you, you got to make a decision. And up the middle they go with Cormier. Has to dodge a tackler in the backfield. But he keeps on going. And that may be his best run this evening as he takes it ahead for seven yards to the 22. That's a first down. Think of First Tire and Auto for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. Normally, Kovo, if we had played this game on the day it was scheduled, you'd have a big crowd. The Bush fans would be going nuts, but it's kind of just right. a little, you know. <laughs> sure. It's like Rowan and Martin's laugh-in. You don't know what I'm talking about. No. Nor should you, but that's okay. The Broncos... Going to have to score somehow. Oh, no. The what? snap went past Hilder. He didn't know it was coming. It's wow. uh, recovered oh, inside Ranch the five it. by George Ranch. Oh, my goodness. Hilder huh? was looking over at one of his receivers or looking at the defense, and what a gift wrapped well, on the threshold turnover. Oh, my goodness. But, however, not all is lost. Not I all mean, is lost. That very well could have. It could have easily been a scoop and score touchdown, but the ball is down at the two-yard line. So if you're Bush, you're, the defense, if the defensive coordinator is telling them, guys, flush it, right? Forget about that play. Just here we go. We got a shot. We got to stop him. We got to keep him out. And uh, so that, that's what you got to see here if you're Bush. I mean, that was a fortuitous break. I know it sucked that the ball went over their head, but at least it did, it did not go in for a scoop and score touchdown. They got a shot to make a stop here. And it seemed like a full second passed before Hilder even realized the ball was back there. Correct. On the two-yard line, here comes George Ranch. Hyman Drinker taking the direct snap flag. and there into the flag. end zone he goes. But, yes, Kovo's right. There's ah, a flag. It's offside right. Bush. It'll be declined, and it's a touchdown for George Ranch. That is an Archer Volkswagen touchdown scoring drive. It covers two yards. It was one play. Hyman Drinker going in off the direct yeah. snap and it took six seconds off the clock. That's a tough sudden change because it was just such a um, deflating fashion just to have a, a total miscue where the ball snapped and the quarterback's not looking. And I think that was a pretty easy touchdown. I, that's, not, that's unusual for the Bush front seven, you know? So I think they, they're still just a little deflated on that sudden switch of momentum. And we're going to have to see how Bush will respond to this. you got to keep your composure. You had a real bad break. Michelle adds the extra point for George Ranch. They're up 14 to seven with 9.39 to go. We'll be back. This is VibeFortBend.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenall with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us. Okay, uh, our little commercial player kind of gave up the ghost. Uh, we'll, we'll revive it for the next break. Sorry about that. Bradley Stavenaugh and the Needville Insurance Agency. Go to see them for your insurance needs. They'll save you money on your car and home insurance. David Michelle to kick it off. It's a very short kickoff this time. Returnable for Hackworth from the 15. Up the middle he goes and gets across the 40. Still going. Midfield still going near sideline. And two Longhorns catch up with him. And it was not Hackworth. Actually, it was Michael Omodia. And that's a real shot in the arm. Bush has been backed up in their own yeah. end so much ever since we resumed this football game this evening. And now they have it. Where do they spot it? Right at the 38-yard line. I thought for sure he was gone. Yep. Now, this is not a jab at our, our good friend and colleague, Dennis Silva, because I'm he is so good, and I am so excited that he's on the bike team. But I was looking back at the preseason prognostications, like, how do we miss these guys? You know, so I, I pulled up the, his prediction, and he had he had Bush in sixth spot. 
even behind Austin, you know, yeah. he's winless, you know? So it's a, I think nobody saw this coming, you know, even experts like him. And, man, seeing this team, they're awesome. Fakes a Cormier, little swing pass. It's not going to get much, maybe two, perhaps three yards. Jamon Cooley. There's another Knicks Italian restaurant family connection. Jamon's big brother was a great wide receiver for the Broncos three years ago. And, frankly, Kovo, I can't remember Jamon's big brother's first name. But I know it was a Cooley. And remember, at Nick's Italian Restaurant, their family gets bigger every time you stop by. We are under the nine-minute mark as Bush gets ready to snap the football. They're down 14-7. to seven. Give to Cormier, trying to bounce it outside. The pursuit gets to him, so he heads straight upfield and gets a pretty positive play. Two yards when it looked like it would be no gain, but it brings up a third and six. Yeah, good job there by that defensive end from George Ranch to turn that ball back inside, something that's definitely not easy to do. And even though they are down 14-7, Bush doesn't really go with the fast pace. They don't, you know, go no huddle. They usually take their time between snaps. But that might limit them to this possession and maybe one more, so... Time to get it done. Middle's open. And Hilder drops back, now flush to the right. I think he's going to run. Gets to the 30. He's hit, keeps going, hangs on to the football, and he is stopped, I think, two and a half yards short of the first down. It'll be fourth down from there. Yeah, so the reason I'm saying middle open, George Ranch was really expanding their linebackers. I, I think they were thinking pass on third and long. A quarterback draw play would have really hit the spot right there. Uh, that, that run kind of went to the outside. But I think if they could have gone, if they could have popped up the middle, that, that you could have had an explosive play. So maybe a play action pass here, maybe a screen. Fourth down, Roger. Here we go. Fourth down. Got to have two. The ball is at the 30-yard line of George Ranch. Here are the Broncos. Hiller claps his hands together, gives it to Cormier straight ahead, and he is buried. Number 93. Yes, you said it, penetration. You said 93, yes, that's sir. who it was, Matthew Lambert. And not a lot of imagination for Bush on that fourth down play. Yeah, you got to you got to credit Lambert. Uh, just that was coming from the backside, so from kind of behind the play. He, just, he was able to defeat his block and come straight down the line and make the play. So the Bush defense has to go out there one more time. And so they've only allowed one touch, touchdown, and it came from the two-yard line. George Ranch's other touchdown was a pick six. That courtesy of Trevion Akins. And now they have the ball at their 30-yard line with 7.21 to go. And it's Hyman Drinker trying to get out of the backfield. It's just a wave of orange jerseys coming at him. Brandon Chambers and several others, including Cozy Okorafor, and they give him half a yard. It's second and nine and a half. Yeah, good blitz there from the inside linebacker. That's one of those situations where you have the double team I've been talking about, and they did not. nobody came off on the linebacker. So good run through there for Bush, and they're, you're right. Their, their defense has pitched a gem. You know, it's I guess it's the baseball equivalent of, like, you know, you got a no hitter going, and then there's an error that gives up a run, or something. You know, it's something yeah, of that nature. You know I what think I mean? it's it's kind of like the error was the pick six, and the bloop single after uh, a bad call. What would have been third strike? Right. Let a guy come in. Dion Drinkard hands it off to Hyman. No, it's a keeper. Dion is trying to get an open space, but D'Antonio Hackworth shuts him down after a gain of three. And there were only two Broncos that saw Dion Drinkard coming around the edge. One was D'Antonio Hackworth. He finished it off. Cozy Okorafor slowed him down. Third and seven. I kind of like a game like this. High anxiety, very defensive. Not some big, wild, high-scoring fiasco. This is great football. This is okay. good football. 5.50 to go, clock ticking. Dion called for the snap, trying to get Bush to jump, but now whistles. Timeout, George Ranch. We'll take it with him. We'll be back on VipeFortBend.com. 
Hi, this is Mariela and Melina coming to you from Nick's Italian Restaurant where you can come and try one of our house specialties, the Nick's Shrimp, or one of our chicken pistachios. Not in the mood for food? You can also try one of our savory desserts like our homemade tiramisu or cannoli. We're located on FM 1464 just north of Austin High School. Can't sign in? You can call ahead at 346-401-1546 seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Or you can hit us on one of the major delivery platforms, Uber, Grubhub, or DoorDash. We look forward to seeing you here at Nick's Italian Restaurant, where our family gets bigger every time you stop by. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max and OfficeDepot.com. Okay, we're back. It's third down and seven. Bush needs this stop, needs to get that three and out and give the ball back to their offense. They trail 14 to seven. Deion Drinker dropping back. They protect him, fires far sideline, ball up in the air. And it falls incomplete. And I know I'm kind of looking at this through Bush Broncos colored glasses, but I think that was a good non-call. You know, there are a few appeals for a penalty flag. I think the receiver. I think the receiver, if he could have sold it better, might have been able to get the call because it was one of those underthrown balls, right? So I think if the receiver would have fought back harder to try to get the ball, he could have gotten the defender to run into him. Uh, but, but yeah, I agree. But from what what was there, I mean, that's good coverage and. Now the punt team is out there for George Ranch. Okay, I have never met D'Antonio Hackworth, but I think I know what he's thinking right now. He's thinking, I need to take this to the house and make sure that we don't end up not being able to score. Oh. A flag comes down. He scoops it up on a bounce at the 33, heads to the near sideline, makes a last move, made a guy miss, and he was kind of pointing at the guy who Confused. he made to miss. Confusing all the flags. They have 12 guys out there or something? Yeah, I have a feeling it's going to be a substitution infraction on the Broncos because it was the official who was right back there with Hackworth. Yeah, I, th I think it's probably 12 men on the field. I'll turn. <laughs> 12 men. Yeah, 12 men on the defense, and that's going to hurt Bush, but not too, too much. It won't give, you know, uh, George Ranch – a first down or anything if it was fourth and less than five it would be first down yeah i mean it's it's not it's not a, a total killer i mean i've you don't want it but uh they can easily rebound from that actually they're gonna it's gonna you're gonna make them punt again well uh george ranch would prefer to punt again i don't know that that's the best move necessarily yeah what would you do Where, the, how, how much of a return did Hackworth get? I'm sorry. He got, I guess it was about 13, 14 yards near midfield. Yeah, I mean, I think I could be okay with that because you run the risk of giving him another shot at it. Maybe he busts one off, you know what I mean? Well, uh, because of a wrinkled jersey, I'm not really sure who punts for George Ranch, but it looks like it could be Hyman Drinker, and he's their best running back. It might also be Tim Fisher. I can't tell if the number is five or three. Bush has everybody spread out, and Fake. he is going to run for it, and he's got the first down and more. He's across midfield, and I knew that was going to happen yeah, somehow. Me, me too, because I was going to say, why would you re-kick it unless you wanted to go for it? Yeah. So I almost thought they'd bring the offense out. I didn't – I, I got to be honest, I'm a little shocked that, that they went for it inside of their own territory, you know, that their own 38-yard line, especially in a game like this. It seems like both teams are kind of – trying to play the field position game because of the strength of their defense. But uh, that, that, so obviously that was a huge penalty. Nick Cavallo and his staff, a great time to do that. Tim Fisher certainly looked on that play like a good enough athlete to be a good bet to make it when it's just two yards up the middle. And Bush did have their, their punt rushers spread way out across the field. So the middle was kind of open. They have it at the 47. And up the middle they go. Nothing there, but time is on the George Ranch Longhorn side and you know there's something I, I guess this is a good time to say it our good friend Easy De Los Santos so long the head baseball coach at Clements now on the George Ranch staff he's been struggling with 
being in the hospital with breathing issues and uh, COVID case he can't shake. And uh, he's been texting me a little bit, but he hasn't texted me in a couple of days. And easy, we are pulling for you, praying for you, and uh, everyone at both schools, no doubt. In fact, all the Fort Mend ISD schools, for sure. Easy De Los Santos. Hope you get out of the hospital soon. Here we go, 13 yards to go on second down, and Hyman Drinkard makes a one-handed catch. It's not that big of a play. It only gains four, and it'll set up a third and nine. But he just kind of reached out there with the arm, pulled it down, didn't break stride. It's dangerous, though. There's a defender oh, bearing yeah. down on it. I wouldn't have wanted – if I'm Nick Cavallo, I don't want I, – I know we got a couple yards out of that, but I wouldn't want to live that throw again. But, yeah, easy, easy. Uh, Delos, also as he's known, when I first – I started at Clements as a rookie coach, and he was just the nicest guy to me. And uh, always made me feel like I belong there, and uh, so I'm, 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 I just know he's a tough guy, man. I'm pulling for him, and I uh, just want to recognize him for just being such a great guy and for, and for taking me under his wing and being a great um, mentor. Hope he's listening. Bootleg, Dion Drinkard looking down the field, throws in the pass, is broken up. Oh, that's a beautiful play. We haven't called this guy's name tonight, but Ty Bickham knocks it out of the hands of Gregor Jones, and that's a huge stop. But here's the deal. It's fourth and nine. Tim Fisher will come on to punt it away. We've got 3.05 to go. Bush has to have a touchdown. And unless D'Antonio Hackworth can get a big punt return, they're not going to have very good field position. Yeah, there's no way they're going to fake it here. No way. And the way this game is gone, you just kind of hope for an error. If you're Bush, you hope... There's a bad snap. There was a snap that bounced back yeah, there, there to You're Fisher. Right about that. And of course, uh, as fate would have it, it went straight to Fisher. Timeout, Bush. So that's their second one. They've only got one left. Bush took a timeout? I believe so. Uh, I might be wrong about that. I think it might have been George Ranch. Okay, well, that, that George would Ranch certainly. George Ranch one timeout left. It'd make more sense. Right. Okay, yeah, you're right. George Ranch's timeout total is now down to one. Wait a minute. There was no timeout. Delay it was simply delay of game. Maybe giving themselves more space to try to get a pin them inside. Some, some, team, some teams will do that. Fisher standing at his 29-yard line. The line of scrimmage is the 49. It's a good snap. No real pressure. And it's a tail dragger. It bounces a couple of times, Ooh. and it might have hit a Bush Bronco. Actually, it came it's close, very close, dangerously close. But the ball ends up being downed at the 16-yard line. So here's the situation. Bush is down 14-7, to 2.56 to go, and they're at their own 16-yard line. Yeah, so uh, time management is huge. I mean, you need to get out of bounds. You need to work the sidelines. You can't get tackled inbounds. Like, you know, things like that are going to be huge here. Uh, you need to hustle up to the line every time. You need to be ready to spike when necessary. Uh, two timeouts to work with, but you, field goal does you no good, right? You got to get in the end zone. Nine, 85 yards to go. It's going to be a tall task. I wonder if they'll put Hackworth in at wide receiver. He's probably their fastest player. Hiller's going to pass, steps up, escapes. Now he throws it late, actually. And it's a completion and a short gain of two yards as he delivers the first catch of the game to Raheem Mercurius. Yeah, Mercurius, I mean, yes, you want to get out of bounds, but he allowed himself to drift so far to the sideline that, that his momentum of catching the ball took him out immediately out of bounds. So that's not exactly what they're looking for, right? I mean, you still want to catch it, get some yardage, and then move forward. And Kova, what is happening here? Yeah, the, the clock referee, is ticking. The Bush coaches The officials to, have to stop yeah, the clock. They there have. they see it. They have. And, um, you know, that's Kovo... <laughs> I'm going to tell you something during a break. I'm not going to say it on the air. Okay. We have a special guest clock operator oh. that I would expect better of. Yeah, I was okay. going to say. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't, don't no, person, don't don't guess. Please yeah. don't guess. I won't. But uh, I. It's unusual. That that's usually you get a little bit of home cooking. So <laughs> it's unusual here in your home. Well, this this guy I can tell you is a neutral. Yeah. Official, and the key word official. Oh, no. We know him very well well as an official, and I think he's both. Both of us think he's one of our favorite referees. All right, clock now at 2.40 to go. Hilder gets rid of it quickly, pass tipped, and falls incomplete. Oh, that was almost picked off, and there is Tim Fisher 
the punter, who's also a linebacker, batted it up in the air, and he almost got himself a game-clinching interception, but it's cool. third down and eight for the Broncos. I don't know, man. And, and while, uh, just full disclosure, Kovo typed something into his phone. He typed a name. I looked at the name said, no, that's not the guy <laughs> that we're talking about. I, you know, you, everything tells you throw it, but I still think Bush on just a conventional play could pop one. They as, might as be George able Rance to. thinks pass. You know what I mean? Third down and eight. Here comes the blitz. Hilder stepping up. Got to get rid of it. Gets oh, rid wide of it. Wide open. And it is. Oh, oh, it's dropped. Oh, my goodness. Jamon Cooley was open. He is face first on the field turf. He was past the 40 of George Ranch. He would have gone in for a touchdown. Oh. I'm going to say this, though, Roger. That should have been an easy walk-in touchdown. It was dropped. But Bryce McDonald, the junior defensive back who's made so many great tackles, that kid's got a future. Because you know what happened after, the, after everyone else was groaning, myself included, he went straight up to Cooley and he – Patted him on the helmet and said, hey, it's going to be okay. Great leadership there from Bryce McDonald. Oh, that would have been exciting, though. Yeah. It would have been exciting. And now it's fourth down. This it's huge. fourth down. They've got to have it, fourth and eight. And they're down to two timeouts. But very unlikely they would get the ball back with much time if they don't convert here. And timeout, George Ranch. That's the Longhorns' last one. We'll take it and be back on VipeFortBend.com. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. All right, we are back. And George Ranch called the timeout, but hopefully the Broncos have called a play that will come up aces. They were so close on the third down pass to Jamon Cooley. Fourth down and eight, Tyler Hilder. See what kind of rush George Ranch brings. Hilder throws, he's got Hackworth first down. 35 yard line. Yeah. Diving attempt to the tackle by Jeffrey Ugo Chukwu. Almost got there in time. They mark him at the 34. Ridge Point football players to our left are making a lot of noise. Now Hilder drops back, steps up, has time, and just throws it away near sideline with 2.11 to go. I kind of don't understand George Ranch's defensive alignment versus the trips receivers. Like, they're outnumbered, you know, so uh, they, they kind of have, like, a, a deep center fielder. You know, but there, there's not enough defenders, in my opinion, at least, on the trip. So that might be something that Coach Kavai on his staff, maybe they're talking on the headset that they, they need to bump some guys out so they can at least disrupt these receivers coming off the line of scrimmage. So Hackworth but, is out there as part of the receiver package. And a quick pass, and it's behind the receiver incomplete. Third down and 10, Michael Omedia, uh, Omodia. On, is that was what we call a bubble screen? Or was that slip a screen. slip screen? Yeah, the outside receiver is coming in. And there was a receiver or two in front of him, basically yes. make, trying to, to get away with a pick, a little it, subtle block. It, it's a good call uh, schematically because George Ranch is playing man-to-man -man coverage. So, yes, you're right. You get that rub action, that pick action with that. So that, that had the ball been on target, that potentially could have been a good play. Well, I wonder if they could somehow run the same play that was open with Cooley a few plays ago. Third down and 10. Hilder drops back, but there is a timeout called by Bush before they get that play going. It's not a good, that's not a good use of the clock No, and there. one of the Bush offensive linemen is upset. Brock Boutte looks like, wow, we had something going there. We should have just let it go. Plus, you don't want to waste the timeout when the clock is stopped. Yeah. You know, you're going to need them. You're still, there's still two minutes to go in this game. There's quite a bit of time, actually. And uh, so. one uh, one timeout with that 2.04 to go. So, you know, Kovo, it's gotten a lot louder right up here at the top of the 
home side stands, all these Ridgepoint players scouting Bush, the team that they will probably play on Saturday. This kind of feels like, you know, when Marshall was trying to pull off that Missouri City miracle against Huntsville three years ago in the playoffs. All right, third and 10. Hilder out of the spread. Drops back. They protect him. Now he's hit. Now he goes down. Sacked. Big loss back at the 24. That hurts. Will they use the timeout now or will they hurry up? And the helmet came off of Tyler Hilder. So he can't, he can't he, take he, the snap unless they take a timeout. Right, right. Um, the clock is stopped, though, so I guess they did use a timeout. Okay, yeah, I guess they did right. use that timeout. Well, so. now they're rolling the ball back in. And now the clock is running again. I'm totally confused as to I'm what confused, too. So they okay. really need to put five. And th th that was not on the clock operator. That was the official said, wind the clock. Right, uh, okay. To me, that's a sack. The clock should have never stopped in the first place. Or unless a timeout was taken, but they stopped the clock and then started it again. So I'm just completely confused as to what just transpired. Yeah, and every once in a while when something like that happens, the referee will turn on his mic and explain what happened and or what the wow. clock should be set at. Well, both teams have extinguished all timeouts, Rogers. At least we don't have to worry about that anymore. We know nobody can stop the clock with a timeout. Um, tough spot. Great job there by number 50. Uh, Lee Jones, he beat his guy, and then he was one-on-one -on -one with the running back, uh, Adrian Cormier, and that, that's a tough spot to ask Cormier to Cormier uh, to block to block a you know interior defense lineman busting through. So, well, one other thing, I hope it comes to this. Obviously, it'll be very exciting if Bush pulls off the big play and gets a score before we run out of time. Do you go for two, or even think about going for two? Good question. I say you kick it, but I wouldn't I wouldn't blame Coach Aldridge if he did go for two. Fourth and 19 from the 25. Bush needs a big play or maybe a George Ranch penalty to bail him out. And there's a quick pass. pass. It's going to be a double pass. Valentine throws it down the field, and it's tipped, and it's incomplete. And that's going to do it for the Bush Broncos' cause tonight. They have run out of timeouts. There's 146 left on the clock, and... All the George Ranch Longhorns are going to have to do is take a knee. And, you know, I'm going to send a link to this game to Easy De Los Santos. And uh, assuming he is still in the hospital, I mean, I hope he's out of the hospital. But if he's not, you know, I, I want him to hear our shout out and just let him know how much we Absolutely. care for him and are pulling for him. And now that he is on the George Ranch staff, he's got to feel pretty good about it. And the fact that all these Ridgepoint players are just filing out of the stadium right in front of us, well, that tells you everything you need to know, that the competitive part of this football game is over. Congratulations to George Ranch. They will improve to 3-2 and two in their district games, and that means they are still very much alive. They still have a game against Clements. It's coming up Saturday night, I believe. Yes. Oh, ooh. Wow. Oh, uh, uh, Dion Drinkard took a knee, and as he did, one of his teammates just got pushed over backwards. And I hope we don't start seeing any well, pushing and shoving. I think there is a George Ranch lineman just trying to well, keep his guys yeah. back. It's one of those things where, like, it's kind of accepted now when in a kneel situation you're not supposed to fire off. And so basically George Ranch guys are just kind of standing there and on the edge, one of the Bush defenders just completely decked his guy and put him on his back. I guess you got to be ready for anything, no matter what, right? Yeah, and I, me personally, in my opinion, I don't like that, that kind of gentleman's truce. I, if I'm the defense, I would like to fire off and hope that I can force a fumbled snap. So I, I kind of don't like when I see in, in the college and the pros or wherever that they, they just don't even attempt to make the play. I, yeah. I disagree with that. So I have no problem kind of with what just happened, but... I don't know. I guess just both both sides need to know, are we going hard or are we not, I guess. But no penalty flags were thrown or anything of that nature. Dion Drinkard, the sophomore quarterback, shouting out instructions, takes the snap, takes one step backward, and takes a knee again. We're under a minute to go. I think they will have to snap it one more time, but that will be that. 
George Ranch has outscored the Bush Broncos 14 to nothing in the <laughs> continuation <laughs> of this game as Bobby Darnell frightens poor He's Kobo. Kobo you, is easily startled. So George Ranch is alive and Clements will be waiting for them, right, Coach Darnell? He's nodding yeah. his head and giving the thumbs up. And that's it, the final knee taken by George Ranch and the Bush Broncos are unable to pull off the win, but all is not lost for them. That just drops them to four and one, and they're gonna be taking on five and zero oh Ridge Point, probably Saturday. We'll certainly let you know. And Kovo, you have anything to say? No, it's, it's funny that Coach Darnell just showed up. I mean, I'm really looking forward uh, to the game uh, th this, this weekend. Clements, George Ranch, huge playoff implications. Uh, it, it's, it's just win baby time for Clements. You know, that, that, you, know you can talk up playoff scenarios and tiebreakers, which are still a potential, but uh, yeah, the Rangers, Rangers want to punch their ticket to the playoffs, so they got a huge opportunity against George Ranch, and we'll be here to bring it to you. We're, we're looking forward to it. Okay, so here is the plan for the week. Tomorrow night we've got volleyball, Ridge Point at Travis. Then usually on Thursday night we have a game. It was going to be Ridge Point against Bush. But because Bush had to continue their game tonight, there will be no broadcast of a Fort Bend game on uh, Thursday night. We'll kind of take a little break, and I think we deserve one, Kovo. We've been doing a lot of games. And then on Friday night, I'm doing this from memory. What do we have Friday night? I'm trying to remember now. I think it's Travis and uh, my mind's a blank. Elkins? I don't know. I know Clements and Dulles are playing this week, so. Okay. I'm not if Dulles and Austin are playing this week, so. I'm okay, yeah, that was that's Saturday, uh -huh. and we're not going to do that game if George Ranch, I'm sorry, if Bush and Ridge Point are playing on Saturday right, afternoon. Right. We were going to be doing that Dulles Austin game, but uh, we've changed the play at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> anyway, we're going to have a game on Friday night, and we'll have two on Saturday. And we'll bring them to you on VipeFortBend.com. So for James Kovaleski, for Merle Bertrand, and who was our QA tonight? We got to make sure we recognize the soldiers. Josh Cargile pushing the buttons for us, making sure everything sounded good. Congratulations, George Ranch. You have won what amounted to a playoff game for you, and you're still very much alive. And I guess we'll see you on Saturday night against Clements. So good night, everybody, from Hall Stadium, and we'll see you on the volleyball court tomorrow night.